Hi there. I got a few questions about number 31 and number 32 on the second homework assignment. Uh, some general confusion and also some questions about what, what do these problems want you to do? What do these three questions mean? Now, what you're doing is, first of all, you are charting a game that is in progress. And I think that that's the first thing that you should be doing. These problems both describe games that are in progress, they're not finished yet, and what you can do is try to track the moves and make a chart. Now the way that I've always done this, I'm going to play with a 20 stick game here, is I've made like a two column kind of diagram, and with every move I will subtract the number of sticks that each player took and make a new entry on my chart. So, for example, I'm just going to make up a game that's it's not the same as 31 or 32, but it'll be good enough for this video. So for example, if I wrote these numbers down, it would be because the very first move was that player one took two sticks, and then player one, player two took one stick. And I'm going to do two more turns. So let's say that after that, player one took two sticks again, and then player two took four sticks. So we're in the middle of this game, and there's 11 sticks left. The problem asks you to do three different things. Number one, please say what player one's next move should be. Number two, can you make it without breaking the rules of the game? And if that question's a little confusing for you, you can think about how we phrase this in class. Does player one still have the advantage? Does player one still have control over the game so that they can beat player two? And finally, the book says, did you make a mistake at some point if so where? And I'm going to go a little farther and analyze this entire game blow by blow and figure out if anyone made a mistake at any time. So here's the chart again with all four turns labeled. So the first question is the most straightforward. Uh, according to the algorithm taught in class, I know to write the number 11 as a sum of non-adjacent Fibonacci numbers. So 8 and 3 are non-adjacent, and so I know that 11 is equal to 8 plus 3. And you always pick the smallest one. So after doing that math, I'm going to say, okay, player 1 should take 3 sticks. I'm going to go ahead and write that 8 in the table to show that that's the fifth move that I figured out. Okay. Secondly, can player one still win this game? Um, based on what we did in lecture, I think that player one can still win. They left a Fibonacci number's worth of sticks on the table for player two. And if there's eight sticks on the table, player two can't possibly win. So I think that player one still has control over the game. Now comes the challenging bit. I'm going to analyze all four turns that were taken and decide whether I agree with those turns. So for turn one, I'm going to take 20 sticks and express it as a sum of non-adjacent Fibonacci numbers. I have 13 plus 5 plus 2. That means that the first move should be, according to me, two sticks. Well, that's what player one did, so that's a good move. For turn two, the number 18 needs to be expressed. Well, actually when I think about it, the strategy doesn't really apply. I don't think, because 18 is really 13 plus 5, and player 2 can't take 5 sticks. And I think we talked about, at least we talked about in office hours, I don't know if we talked about in lecture, but sometimes the strategy doesn't apply for player 2. That's the whole point. Player 1 is trying to screw over player 2. So I couldn't find any good moves. Uh, player 2 could take 1, 2, 3, or 4 sticks. Ideally, they should take 5, but that's not possible. So I guess I'll skip that. But now, with 17 sticks left, I can express 17 as 13 plus 3 plus 1. That means that player 1 really should take one stick away, but they took two. And that's not really a good idea. Like, in other words, by taking two sticks instead of one, player 2 could have beaten player 1. That was a really risky thing for player 1 to do. And in the fourth turn, there's 15 sticks left on the table. That's 13 plus 2. So player 2, if player 2 wants to take control of the game and win, they should pick two sticks up off the table, but they took four. So player 2 also screwed up. And so there, there's no conflict here. Player 1 can still win even though they messed up because player 2 also messed up. And so I have fully analyzed this game.